Hi, I'm Antonio Centeno. I'm the founder of Real Men Real Style. Today, I'm going to be speaking with you about how to properly wear black tie, how to properly wear a tuxedo. If you haven't already, make sure to go check out the article over at The Art of Manliness. That's what this video is based off of. In that article, it's 3,000 words long. I give you visual representations of everything I'm going to speak about. In addition, I go into a, a lot more detail. So if you enjoy this video, go check out the article. Okay, so I want to start off with black tie and I want to lay out this is very easy. And the reason black tie is easy, the, the reason it's easy to actually wear a tuxedo is the rules are very clearly laid out. When you think about business casual, the rules are all, are all over the place. When you think of casual wear, the rules are all over the place. When it comes to black tie, the rules are clearly laid out. Knowing that, a lot of men, I think there is still some confusion out there because if you look to Hollywood, you look on television, you're going to see or go back to your high school prom. You probably saw somebody wearing a green tuxedo. You look online or you uh, look at uh, some of the movie stars, they're wearing a complete black outfit. That is not classical black tie. Classical black tie has uh, evolved over the last 100, 120 years, and we've seen it use the best lines to be able to get an ideal silhouette. So let's start first with the fabric with the color. Black tie is black. In some cases, we're going to go with midnight blue. Now, midnight blue, rarely seen nowadays. You've pretty much got to get it custom made if that's going to be your tux. And I don't recommend it until maybe a second or third tuxedo if you're going to own them. Uh, I think a man should own a tuxedo, but that's for another video. So the fabric, most cases, it's going to be solid jet black. So let's talk about the individual pieces that go with black tie. Number one, let's talk about the jacket. Okay, so right here on this jacket, you're going to see notch lapels, but... Peak lapels, shawl lapels are what you want to see with the tuxedo jacket. That doesn't matter if it's single-breasted or double-breasted. Single-breasted, double-breasted, doesn't matter which route you go with. I recommend single-breasted for most men. It's easier to find and you're more used to wearing it, so you're going to feel a little bit more confident pulling that off. Although if you go for a second or third jacket, why not? Go for a double-breasted. So shawl lapels, peak lapels. Those are really your two options. Don't go with the notch lapel on your black tie. Now, let's go ahead and talk about uh, the vents. The back vents, you're going to usually have side or you're going to have no vents at all. If you've got a center vent, you want to try to avoid that. It's not a deal breaker, but if you can avoid the center vent, I would. Now, the lapel facing. So we're going to take a step back, look back at the lapel. They usually, and you're going to notice, they've got a little bit of a shiny facing on them. And that's going to be, it's going to be the gross gain or it's going to be uh, a satin. So neither one of those is fine. Most of them are going to be satin and that's perfectly fine. And um, the buttons, buttons are covered. So here on my jacket, I've got, uh, you know, mother of a, or actually not mother of pearl, I've got horn buttons right here. And they've got a, you know, a little bit of a, of, of a feel to them that they're not covered with fabric. So on your black tie, you're going to see they're going to be covered with the same fabric that the actual suit is made from. Suit, black tie, in a sense, what a suit is, is it means that, and that's a good transition to the trousers, that the trousers are made from the same material. So let's quickly talk about the trousers. First thing you're going to notice on the trousers is that there is a stripe running down the outside line of the leg. Now, anyone that was in the military, especially the Marine Corps, it's basically the same position as the blood stripe is on the U.S. Uh, Marine Corps blue, dress blue uniform. So if you want to just do a quick search, you'll be able to easily see that. Another thing with the trousers is oftentimes you're going to see they're going to be double pleated and they are not going to have uh, belt loops. Now, if you rent the tuxedo, it's going to have belt loops. But many times if you get it custom made, you, you want to get it made without the belt loops. Traditionally, this is worn a little bit higher at the natural waist and you wear it with suspenders. So thus, no need for belt loops and no cuffs on your black tie. Cuffs are a little bit less formal and so black tie is all about simplicity, all about being one of the highest levels of formality. Although it needs to be pointed out, black tie is not as high as white tie, but white tie is rarely seen, especially in North America. And if you want more information about white tie, go check out my friend uh, 
Raphael, he put together a great guide over at the Gentleman's Gazette on white tie, if that's what you're interested in. Okay, so now we're going to move to the shirt. So the shirt is always white. And you're going to see in the same way you're looking at me, you see this contrast between this dark blue jacket, navy blue, and the white. You're going to see that same contrast a little bit more with the black and the white. Solid white. Now, it's going to usually have pleats. It doesn't have to, but you want to go for pleats on the more classic traditional, although you don't, again, you don't have to have the pleats. And these will be just folds going across the, f the front. They'll be about a quarter of, I'm sorry, half an inch to about one full inch the size of the pleats and they'll go all the way across the front. Now the cuffs on the shirt. You're going to want to go with French cuffs if possible. Some of them will have button cuffs and again, that's okay, but traditionally you want to go with a folded French cuff and that French cuff you're going to need cufflinks for as well. The shirt. The shirt, most of the shirts will not have buttons. Instead, they'll have just two holes and you'll go through, again, you'll be using pieces of jewelry like the cufflinks. They're called studs and they will go right here in the front. Uh, they can be a gold, they can be of silver. I like to match metals. So if you happen to be wearing a watch and make sure it's a dress watch with a leather band, very simple face. That's usually the only type of watch you should wear if you've got something that's pretty gaudy, maybe uh, like a, a a diving watch, don't wear that. Instead, opt not to wear a watch at all. So we've talked about the shirts. Let's go ahead and move into the bow tie. So the bow tie is the only option. Now, you can vary the bow tie. And in black tie, you're allowed to have, I think, one item in which you change up. So you could possibly uh, you know, go with a waist covering that's a little bit of a different color. But when it comes to the bow tie, you really should go with a solid black. Don't go with a necktie, which goes long ways. Uh, and then there's four options of bow tie. There's the butterfly, the semi butterfly, the, uh, the straight edge and the point end. Now I talked quickly about waist coverings. Waist covering is with the area from your shirt to your trousers. And what you don't want to have is you don't want to have, you don't want to have a big jump in contrast from the white to the black of your trousers. You want to have something that helps streamline the look. And that's either going to be a waistcoat. And a traditional waistcoat usually is cut low on black tie, have about three buttons in the front, or you're going to want to go with a cummerbund. And cummerbund, they have a history coming out of India. That's where the English supposedly brought it from, uh, formerly called the sash. Uh, that's where it started as. And the cummerbund just goes right across the front. Most of us are familiar with cummerbunds if you've ever worn a tuxedo, as that that's pretty much what rental uh, rentals give uh, give to the guys. And they come in a wide variety of colors. Gentlemen, you want to go with black. So for more information, I'm going to give you some great visuals and I go into a lot more about the history. Again, go check out the article. Now, your footwear, your shoes. Two options here. Although a lot more than two options in terms of styles and variations, but really you can either go with pumps, which are basically formal slippers, or you can go with Balmoral Oxfords, which you're probably familiar with from ever wearing a suit. The difference is you're going to see a lot of patent leathers here. And patent leather is that really shiny dress leather. You're not going to have to apply polish to it. It's already pre-polished. I mean, you can, you can clean it up a bit if it ever gets dirty, but uh, no, you're not going to have to really polish that. I do recommend though, that you go with just a leather that can be uh, I like to have an interchangeable shoe. So I find a lot of men, especially if they don't wear black tie very often, they're going to want to go with a Balmoral Oxford that they really shine up and they get a really nice shine on. And that works as a great option as well. So to round this off, there's a couple things. You can always wear a pocket square. You can always wear a boutonniere. Uh, carnations are, are great. A white or a red carnation is a perfect option. I've talked about suspenders. Sus suspenders are better than uh, a belt almost forgot what it was called, and a watch. Technically, you're not supposed to wear a watch, but you can pull one off nowadays. But again, always go for something very simple with a black leather band with a, a very simple face. That's it for black tie. I go into a lot more detail again in the article. I talk about history. I go into uh, a few, you know, again, I give you some great visual examples. So go check out the article over at The Art of Manliness. And if you want more, you're, you're curious more about style, go check out real men, real style. I go into a lot more detail. I've got hundreds of videos, uh, hundreds of articles, a lot of great information for you. All right. Take care. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.